Hello everyone and welcome to In Focus. A pleasure always is mine that you join us on this very important program. And tonight, our conversation centers around millennials. We'll talk about what they are and who they are in just a moment. But there is a growing malady within the Bahamian student and young people population. And that's viral videos showing violent and sometimes obscene, if not sexually explicit content. Now, of course, this is not unique to the Bahamas. In fact, it's a worldwide phenomenon. According to a digital ethnography recent study conducted by Kansas State University in the United States, a working group found that was led by Professor Michael Wesch that more than 150,000 videos are uploaded to YouTube every single day. YouTube. And many of these videos were created by teens, mostly under the age of 13. And while a vast majority of these youth-created videos are relatively innocuous, a few more incendiary uploads have raised considerable concern, like they are raising here in the Bahamas. For example, in March of 2008, right across the waters in Florida, eight teens, six girls, two boys, lured a fellow student to one of the perpetrator's homes, where the six girls attacked and beat her, videotaping the assault with the attempt to upload it to MySpace and YouTube. The victim ended up with bruises, hearing damage, and a concussion, and the attackers pled guilty and were sentenced. As a result, YouTube underwent a torrent of criticism. A recent case in our own country has raised serious alarm about this trend, and some fear that this scenario is desensitizing our kids to beatings and violence, and that technology like YouTube is giving rise to teen brutality, bullying, fighting, or even generalized teen angst. Tonight, we are going to speak with one of these millennials to help us to see how we can unpack the mind of young people. She is Ms. Rasheen Bethel, who is the founder of Millennial Enterprises. That interview is next. The oldest and most reliable newspaper in the country. An innovator in radio and television news. We're printers, writers, broadcasters. A media company like no other in the Bahamas. The Nassau Guardian. A big thank you to Cable Care Foundation. They basically was the first organization that, that gave us any form of funding. We use the funding that they give to us to have a better avenue to helping the kids. This organization is primarily for youth development. At least 65% of our grants must be designated for youth development. We I got our first set of drums through Cable Cares. To date, we have almost 15 of those drummers off on music scholarship. Kids are getting the exposure internationally. They have performed at the Battle of the Bands at Howard University where they got first place. They performed at the Macy's Parade, chosen over 170 bands plus. Cable Bahamas Cares Foundation came as a result of a discussion on how good a corporate citizen Cable Bahamas could be. And they, they also assisted a lot of other programs and I really thank them and appreciate what they are doing for the youth and the nation. And we do not take it for granted. Thank you very much, everyone, and again, welcome back. It's a pleasure, always a privilege that you will be joining us, and it's my joy this evening to welcome Ms. Rasheen Bethel, who's the founder of Millennial Enterprises. Welcome to In Focus. Thank you. Now, let's start off. Tell our viewers what, in your mind, is a millennial. In my mind, a millennial is a risk-taking, free, outspoken individual that's not afraid to stand up for what they believe. That's a large segment of our population, would you say? Yes, it is. And growing? And growing. Yeah. How do millennials see each other? That's what we or what you think of yourself. But how do you look at another millennial or a millennial looking at you see you? What do they recognize when they see you? Well, I know for me, when I see another millennial, I see 
a person, like I said earlier, that's willing to take the risk and stand up for what it is they believe, no matter what is said about them, no matter the consequence. Um, your generation did it and fell short, but my generation is willing to say, you know what, we're tired of the foolishness and that's just what it is. We see right through you. So we have that like mindset that we're not willing to put up with the foolishness. What, what is it that you really want to achieve? What do a millennials okay. really want to achieve? We want to be able to implement standards and morals into the younger generation, start fresh. Millennial enterprise is not focused on what the generation, really much what the generation before us has done, but rather what we are doing and can do for the next generation. My son, my grandkids, so mm -hmm. forth and so on. Is there justification in the concern that us older, our par us parents, mm -hmm. have about the younger generation? And you know where I'm going with this. You know what's happening on YouTube. You know the kind of things that we see in the streets, the activities of young people. It, it gives us pause that we are handing on to them a country and they don't seem to be ready or interested in taking on the leadership responsibilities for further developing this country. So I'm asking you, is there reason and pause for concern? I would say there is reason and cause for concern, but not along the lines that you're probably thinking. Okay. And, and I'm going to speak on behalf of a lot of my millennial um, friends and partners. Right. We are on these different jobs. We are in the community. Yes. And we have so much to offer. Okay. The concern comes in when you, you made mention about leadership, right. when the older generation don't necessarily want to give us a chance because they're afraid that we're going to drop the ball. Oh, okay. There are so many millennials who have so much to offer. Right. If given the opportunity and the right guidance yes, yes. And, and pointed in the right direction of what their focus should be, and that, that right there is a key point because we had the video that came about with the, the, the young men and that did the the um, recording the of the young lady. Yes. My personal belief is in our school system, rather than teachers just teaching the curriculum, right. they help to, to have a paradigm shift with the young people, to help point them in the direction of focus. Right. Then maybe we can eradicate some of this behavior. Okay. But, but I know my millennial counterparts, we feel that the older generations don't want to give us a chance. Okay. The older politicians don't want to get out of the way. No. You have the government officials or, or directors who don't want to move. You're 65 and you're sitting keeping the chair warm. Yeah. For what? Yeah. Retire and yeah. leave. Okay. And allow the younger generation, if you, if you guys pour into us as you should be doing, Okay. As your generation poured into you the morals, the standards, the principles, I believe wholeheartedly, because I believe in millennial leadership, that we can do a very good job. No, you're prepared for that. No, you, you, I'm not talking about mm -hmm. Rasheen. I'm saying, and I'm also talking about Rasheen, but I'm talking about the millennials. Do you want to be mentored? Because there is a yes, perception by the parents that you don't want to listen, you don't listen, you don't want to accept the advice. Listen, I'm all for the millennials. I wish to give them all the chances they want and so <laughs> forth. I know you're going to fall on your face. Mm -hmm. We did. Others gave us it and so on. But sometimes parents, as I am certainly one and many parents like me, uh -huh. feel that you don't even want to listen. We you do. You checked us. I'm completely We out. do. I disagree <laughs> with that. Here, here is where it shifts, though. It's how you get the message to us. Yeah, don't be preaching. To D don't preach. <laughs> I mean, some of us, we can take it. Like for me, my mom's 68 uh -huh. and I'm 27. Okay. You know, so, you know, for some other gen millennials, they, they can't take that type of pressure. <laughs> to, to, you know, so it's how you get the message across to us. That's uh -huh. it. Yeah. You know, some for some of us, I know for me, sometimes I you can be talking to me and I'm 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 spaced out. You I look spaced out. <laughs> but internally I'm taking in everything that you're saying and you have to allow us to take what you've taught yeah. along with our personality and make the best decision. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You understand? Who Al do who are your teachers? Who who is it that you listen to, seek to emulate, respond to? understand, get the message from, and it could be anybody, I, I'm, any or anything. Me personally? No, 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 the millennials. Who is it that, you know, got your attention, as it were? Which music, maybe idol, or which 
I don't know, preacher or which politician or which leader or which academician or mm -hmm. who? I'm a little different. I'm, I, I always tell people that and I pride myself on being different, but if I had to speak on the general yes. consensus of millennials, I would say from the religious aspect, you have a Joel Olstein. Okay. He is very popular. I, I realize a lot of our, um, my peers tend to make reference to him or a T.D. Jakes. Okay. Okay. You know, T.D. Jakes preaches and, and um, Joel Osteen teaches. Okay. But T.D. Jakes somehow reaches our generation through um, visual yes. um, teachings as well as he comes with power thoughts, power phrases. We, we, can't, we can't intake too much information in, in, in all honesty. <laughs> you have to come with those power one-liners, you okay. know, and that's how he wins us. Joel okay. Osteen, the same thing. Okay. You know, he starts out with a joke, and then he goes into, you know, power thoughts. Okay. And then for the music industry, I know you have... And it, it, you know, it's it's sad, but you have some rappers and some singers. I can't recall because I'm I'm not too well versed in that area. But you have some singers who have their attention, and then you have some politicians. Like I know Donald Trump probably has a lot of my millennial counterparts' they attention. Do. I I truly believe that. Okay, locally, I are the millennials tuned in to what's going on from say are there music idols locally? No. Are any of your politician, our politicians, any of those really capture anything? Mm. You, I, you guys I, have lost us. Really? Because, because for the most part, I will be honest with you, we see foolishness. Okay. We see, we see the bickering among yourselves. We see the underhandedness. And it's like, how do you expect us to respect you when you want to preach to us about morals and standard, but there's none being shown to us? Yeah. So the hypocrisy, the duplicity, see straight through it. We're over it. <laughs> We're over beautiful. it. Beautiful. Listen, let's get to a break because I want to talk to you. There is something going on in this community that strikes us older people mm -hmm. and I are strange. Why would young people like you put your business out into the world, your private business? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, let everybody know what's going on. I like to keep my business very private. To both of us. But understood. <laughs> we're going to take this break, come back. We're talking with Rasheen. It's interesting. The millennials is who we're featuring here this evening on In Focus. Right back. <laughs> Star 106.5 FM, playing the best of today's R&B. R. Kelly, Beyonce, Miguel, Trey Songz, Alicia Keys, Jordan Sparks, Chris Brown, Jennifer Hudson, and Classic Soul. Marvin Gaye, The Jackson, and Teddy Pendergrass. Star 106.5 FM, today's R&B and Classic Soul leader. The way we started was bringing in artists from all over the world. They would come in and perform to expose our young people. We brought them in and they would do a concert and then they would do a workshop. There the children became so interested that they decided that they wanted to do more. So then we began to say, look, we've got to get these kids off the island. Give them the opportunity. Every penny that we earn when we bring in an artist goes to helping our young people, not just to go to college, but also the music schools here. We really look at projects that would have a huge impact for young people in the country. The Cable Bahamas Cares Foundation made it possible. Without them, there would be no Grand Bahama Performing Arts Society. They've made it possible for us to send four young people off to performing arts colleges. They've done very well placing into these colleges. Somebody has to give them the opportunity. Tonight the subject is millennials, friends, and it is because you know what is happening in our community, what has happened, unfortunately, there is uh, the exposure of young people on technology, YouTube, MySpace, and elsewhere, in not the most glamorous of lights, not the most in honorable of circumstances. And 
We have a millennial here, Ms. Rasheen Bethel, who is the founder of Millennial Enterprises, and maybe she can unpack this for us. So what goes through young people's minds? That they want to have their business, their very personal business, their private business, Ms. Bethel, plastered across the universe for all to see. Well, this is where I would get into the young people talk, as we say. Um, on Facebook, there's something that you do, you, you click like, you know, it's, the social media has made it seem like in order for you to get a large amount of likes, like, you know, persons tagging and, and liking your photos, you gotta do something to get their attention. Outrageous. Yes. So it, it's, it's, for me, I've gathered that that's what it is, attention. It's attention. It's attention. Is They're, it that they lack attention or they want more attention? Is both. it a cracker jack mentality? The more you get, the more you want? Both. Okay. And I would Parents say. Parents are not giving them enough attention. They're not being affirmed. Good, good, you're great, Rasheen. That is not enough. Not Mom it. saying it to no. you, dad, no. sister, your aunts, no. cousins. Because you need everyone to yes see. because for 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 some of i would say some because i'm not a you know i wouldn't consider myself to be that person but for some of my my fellow millennials and younger generation that's what it is they don't have it at home most of them they don't have the mother or the father to say i love you and you 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 make me proud yes you make me proud and i'm i'm, I'm so i'm so proud of you of what you've done and what you've accomplished thus far that we tend to go to social media to get that attention for persons to say oh my god you look hot mm -hmm. you look sexy you okay. look handsome i got you you know and then but what about the violent part Rasheen? i mean there's you're fighting. Yeah. And you're standing there, not you, but one is standing there taking the picture. You hear the language in the background, this and that and so on. Or taking pictures of people in their more vulnerable moments. Yeah. You know, private circumstances. What is that? It's unfortunate. But it's what is it? I mean, help us to understand because I'm sure parents out there are trying to say, well, what? what goes through their mind why would you do that what possessed you to do that I and, and I, I would take I would answer this from more of a spiritual standpoint because I, I personally feel that like there is no straightforward answer okay. here is my answer to it I feel like it's a spiritual it's a spiritual situation there's a spirit that's roaming around our country or in the world in general that 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 is out for the younger generation to destroy and, them, to destroy them. You know, and, and this goes back to the older ones. And, and, and I would say the baby boomers, that would be my mom. You know, mothers back in the day, they prayed and they covered. I still, as a millennial, a young person, believe in the power of prayer. You know, we've gotten, it, it has exploded to the point where I don't feel that you can control this because of technology. Technology is in everything, it's everywhere. But I believe that if the older generation come together rather than trying to pull apart with different denomination i'm the head of this and you have to join that da, 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 da. join together for the common goal of saving our younger generation and praying and asking god to intervene because that's all it's going to take i have no straightforward answer as to why my generation and the generation after me decides to do this but I feel that there's no way that we can stop it now at this point. You yourself, as a mother, as a father, have to sit your child down, as I do with my own son, and teach them morals and standards and help them to understand the do's and the don'ts. And once again, inco incorporate prayer. Incorporate God. It's not about religion. It's about getting God in the, in the nooks and the cranny of your home, of your child's mind. It all starts from the mind. And once again, it goes back to focus. If you now tell your child to sit down and have these conversations with them, you cause a paradigm shift to happen. So they would be the ones more or less to either walk away or talk to that friend and say, and it, it, it is happening because my coworker has a daughter who takes time out of her schedule to sit down with other persons and, and tutor them for BJC, to sit down with other persons and counsel them as a young woman. 
So that's because she instills principles and values, not saying that some persons, some parents have not done it and children have still gone astray because there's only so much you can do. They have a mind of their own, as we can see. But I believe in the power of prayer and there's nothing that God can't do. So you think we are failing, meaning the yes. elder, the mentors, yes. the parents. We are as much at fault as the young people in yes. what they are doing. Yes. Because we have not provided the guidance, the assistance, the direction, the focus. Not not a hundred percent. I wouldn't go as far as to say you, you guys have done absolutely nothing. Mm. But I would go as far as to say fifty percent you have and fifty percent you haven't. The next general election is coming real soon. Who is going to impress you? Don't tell me F and M P L P black, white, male, female. But what is that language you're going to have to hear for that vote to be cast for him or her? What is that image you're going to have to see? What is that presentation that is going to capture? And when I say you, I mean the millennials. I would say personal development, helping us to understand how we can better advance ourselves as business owners, as um, leaders, as parents. You know, we don't want to hear, you, the, the country right now is, to me and other millennials, are, is going downhill. We don't, we don't want to hear the same seven and six over it. We promise that we're going to do this and we're going to do that. We've heard the promises. We've, we've seen what you guys can do. You come around before elections, knock on the door. Good day, you put on a good face and then we see you in, in the parliament bickering at one another over frivolous things. We have bigger issues. We have bigger issues, bigger fish to fry, as my mom would say. So for us, it's how can we develop ourselves? How can we move forward as a country? How can we advance our country? We look at the passport situation. And, and, and for me, I don't see why it has to take a month more or so to get your passport or why we seem so third um, um, generation. We seem so behind. And, and our generation is like, we have technology. Like right now? Like right now. <laughs> you know, they, they, say, the they say that's our downfall. Like, we want it now. We yeah. want it to happen right now. But we, we, we know that life is a process. We know that. But we don't understand why does it have to be so complicated to get things done in advance within our country. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm sure young people listen to you. And Older people listen to you as well. <laughs> and they're going to hear more from yeah. me. I'm going to be intentional about carrying the brand of Millennium Enterprise all around the country just to help persons like yourself have a better understanding of our generation because we have a lot to offer. Of course you We're do. not all lazy and we just want it now. We, 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 we're all about ourselves. They said that we're selfish. But for me, I'm taking this brand and pouring into the next generation. How does that make me selfish? Not at all. But congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Come back and see us, please. I will. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rasheen. What a refreshing, what a refreshing contribution. Thanks a whole lot. Rasheen is with the Millennial Enterprises. She, in fact, founded that non-governmental organization. As she said, you're going to hear much more about her. We're going to wrap up on the other side of this break. Thank you so much. We began the program as a result of my husband and I adopting our two sons. It was determined that they had autism. It was going to be difficult for them to get an education in the regular school system. We believe that every student has a right to be productive and a part of the community. We have children with varying disabilities, so the program has to be very individualized. That's important. They learn so many things that are simply beneficial for their development. We're all in this development of this country together. Education of everybody, uh, no matter what the abilities are. What has been accomplished by Mrs. Major in Abaco, that is very dear to my heart. The Cable Bahamas Cares Foundation gave us a grant. 90% of our children don't pay tuition, so it's only through those kind of partnerships that we're able to continue to do that. It's a thank you that comes very much from the heart.
so that concludes our program for this evening. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ms. Rasheen Bethel, the founder of Millennial Enterprises, it's always a joy and it's a pleasure to welcome you. Hopefully, she has unpacked for you a little bit more easily the understanding of who millennials are, who young people are, and how they think. Listen, you want, of course, for you to get in touch with us, join us, and let us know how you think, what you feel about our programs. You can get to us by email in focus at cablebahamas.com, or you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash in focus. We are more than happy to hear from you. Thanks once again, and good evening.